Thank you. I was in my 20s, sitting in the middle of my living room floor, rocking back and forth and sobbing. I was going through a divorce. I hated my job. And everything in my life was going really terribly. And so I was drinking and other things. I was also chain smoking, sleeping with all the wrong guys. If something was a really, really bad idea, I did it, night after night. So you can imagine how well that was going for me, hence the rocking and sobbing. But I was really scared at how fast I was sinking and desperate to come up with another way to feel better that wasn't going to ultimately kill me. And I remembered how once back in high school I sang with the choir over the holidays and how much fun that was. I loved the Christmas carols, the weekly rehearsals, and after the performance we were so happy we were practically bouncing off the walls. That's it, I thought, I'll join a choir, that's easy. So I found a local church in my neighborhood, a beautiful church, Grace Church, that had a community choir, the Choral Society, and that just meant that you didn't have to be a member of the church to belong. And I asked them about joining. And they said, sure, schedule an audition. <laughs> Wait, what? Auditioning was not part of the Feel Better plan. They didn't make me audition that one time. They just let me in. The thing is, I don't really have a very good voice. But my fear of that great big pit of depression that was opening up in front of me was a lot greater than my fear of the audition, so I scheduled one. My devious plan was to get in by begging. So I showed up for the audition and immediately started pleading with the director, please let me in, please let me in. I know I don't have a very good voice, but I promise to sing really, really quietly. No one will ever hear me. He made me audition anyway. And afterwards, he said as gently as possible, yeah, you don't have a really good voice, but you can sing in tune. Welcome to the choir. So I show up for the first rehearsal on a Tuesday night, and someone hands me a copy of Handel's Messiah. That thing is as thick as a book. I went back and looked. It's 230 pages. I open it up, and it is just a mass of meaningless black notes to me. The conductor raised his baton. Everyone else opens up to the same pages and started singing. I'm thinking, please don't have an anxiety attack. Please don't have an anxiety attack. Luckily, when I was a kid, I took piano lessons so I could read music a little bit. And eventually, I got the hang of turning those little black notes into song. And my whole world changed. I'd never sung a masterpiece before. Christmas carols are great. I will always love Christmas carols. But when you sing a great piece of music, as opposed to listen, you become that great piece of music. The voice is an instrument, like a guitar or a violin, but it's a very personal instrument. You take a deep breath, and a work of art, like the Hallelujah Chorus, comes out of you. When you sing, you create these musical vibrations, and they move through you, and they change you. And what they do is they leave you in better shape than you were before you open your mouth, and at the best of times, and I am not exaggerating, they leave you trembling with bliss. Now, singing in any form is great, but singing with other people is the best of all. It takes something so intimate, sounds that began inside you, and then shares them with a room full of people. Your vibrations combine with their vibrations, and together you pull Beethoven's Ode to Joy chorus out of thin air. Um, this is such an important point. I want to new, use another example and get specific. When the composer, Randall Thompson, wrote music for the words, ye shall have a song and gladness of heart, he wanted me to feel gladness of heart when I sang it. Now, Randall Thompson was a genius. When I sing those words, and together with other people, we make these beautiful incandescent sounds that I never could have made alone. 
gladness of heart is surging through me from head to toe. Sometimes I can't get through it without bursting into tears. And I'm not the only one. I've spoken to my fellow singers, and I'm not the only one up there weeping. I'm telling you, no matter what mood you were in, when you walked into a choir rehearsal, you will walk out afterwards feeling better, at least somewhat better, guaranteed. Over 30 years ago, when I fought panic and out came Handel's Messiah, ever since that night, as I say over and over, I have not found the sorrow that couldn't be at least somewhat alleviated or the joy that couldn't be made even greater by singing with other people. Now, obviously, singing didn't solve all my problems overnight, and I did eventually have to get myself into a rehab. And over the years, people I love have died, pets I've loved have died, boyfriends have come and gone, jobs have been come and gone. I have failed in life more than I've succeeded. But every Tuesday night, I am still singing with the Choral Society. I am still feeling better when I do, and that never fails. So I researched the science of singing. Ask any singer, and they will tell you that in addition to being emotionally uplifting, there's, as I said, there's this very definite, great physical, tangible feeling that goes with it. Rehearsals give me a bit of a buzz. So science is at the very beginning of this research, and experiments that have been developed have to be fine-tuned and new experiments found, but they have learned some things. And one of the things they've learned is when you sing, the brain unleashes neurochemicals that have to do with raising pleasure and alertness and lowering anxiety and stress. And I'm just going to touch on the highlights. One of the things that the brain um, unleashes is oxytocin. And what that does, in addition to managing anxiety and stress, is it's associated with feelings of trust and bonding. And therefore, it's sometimes jokingly referred to as the love hormone. After singing, singers are found to have lower levels of cortisol, and that indicates lower stress. Singing unleashes endorphins, which give you that rush, or what we call singer's high. In fact, I found this one study that looked at endorphin release and pain threshold. And they looked at singers, dancers, and drummers. And they concluded that it was the performance itself that was responsible for the endorphin high and not simply listening to music. Singing unleashes dopamine, which is famous for pleasures, feelings of pleasure and euphoria. After singing, singers are found to have higher levels of this thing, which I can never quite pronounce, secretory immunoglobulin. And that enhances our immune defense. Singing stimulates the saculus, which is an organ deep in the inner ear connected to the part of the brain that's associated with pleasure. So to summarize, science seems to have found very convincing evidence that singing feels pretty good. Singing with other people. It is one of the most transcendent forms of group joy we have. Close your eyes and all you know of the people singing around you are the beautiful, gorgeous sounds that you are making together. The fact that a masterpiece like the Bach B minor mass can only be achieved by intense cooperation bonds you. That kind of sustained effort, week after week after week, regularly working through mistakes together, all to create something beautiful, is the ultimate communion. And I want to play a brief clip that I made of our choir during a rehearsal. You're only going to see the director of the choir, uh, the Choral Society, John McClay, because I shot it from within the choir. But hopefully it'll give you some sense of what it's like to be in the middle of that sound.
just want to make the point again that it is not crucial that you have a fantastic voice to do this. I don't, I'm not being falsely modest, and I just have another brief story. A few years after joining the choir, I took singing lessons to address my own deep insecurity about my voice. And I took lessons with the woman who was the associate director of the choir at the time, Dillis Smith. And at our very first lesson, she played a recording of the choir that had been made at a recent performance, a performance I had participated in. And um, we sounded so great. And I said to her, listen to us. We are genuinely fantastically good. And she looked at me and said, your voice is in there. My mediocre voice was part of that beautiful, beautiful sound. That said, this is the kind of thing that the harder you work at it, the more mind-blowingly better it will feel. I found this uh, newsletter at Grace Church, um, and I know you can read it too, but I'm just going to read it out loud. It's from the 1970s, and it says, we do not doubt that there are needs which run deeper than words, deeper even than thought, and that some of them may be reached by the power of music. When you regularly share something that is beyond words and addresses those needs, it creates understanding among you, and understanding strengthens community. In this way, music is a great ambassador. It bridges people with different ideas, different politics, different religion, or no religion at all. Music just cuts all through that and goes straight to our common ground what some people call the soul, or the spirit, or our hearts. In conclusion, I can't get over that an idea that I came up with when I was in my 20s, sitting in the middle of my living room floor, not entirely sober, would end up being one of the best ideas I've ever had in my life. I do want to show you just a few shots of the Coral Society, my beloved Coral Society, the happy Coral Society. <laughs> and to leave you with one suggestion, it's going to be a really obvious suggestion, but join a choir <laughs> or any group that sings together. It is one of the most democratic, accessible, affordable, and most importantly, the most dependable routes to happiness we have out there. Thank you.